I'm Peggy Peck in New Orleans at the American Stroke Association. TPA is the only FDA approved treatment for thrombolysis of ischemic stroke, but it must be administered in three hours or less. A number of researchers have looked at ways to extend that therapeutic window. I'm talking now with Dr. Larry Goldstein, a stroke neurologist from Duke University, who describes the latest study looking at a way to broaden that window. Dr. Goldstein, can you tell us about data reported here at the American Stroke Association on a new, on a new way to extend the treatment window for thrombolysis of stroke? Well, this was a phase two study that was done to try to help design a more definitive intervention trial to see whether, in fact, this therapy leads to better clinical outcomes. As a study designed to help inform a, a future cl clinical trial design, I think it was done extraordinarily well. Um, the idea about having this diffusion perfusion mismatch to identify patients who might benefit from reperfusion is an important concept that still hasn't been proven to lead to improved clinical outcomes with treatment. The data from this is suggestive and hopeful, and I think it can be used very helpfully to help design that further clinical trial to figure out whether this actually helps people or not. Do you, do you think that the, that the mismatch area, that that really does design, uh, that, that does define an area of, of brain that can be, can be saved? Can that's hopefully true, but again, we don't know that because that's never been shown in a clinical trial where reperfusing people who have mismatch leads to improved clinical outcomes. And I'm, I'm wondering also, we hear so much about um, if there was only a way to extend the window, make it beyond three hours, but it's my understanding that people who don't make the three-hour window, maybe they don't even show up for therapy for like 12 hours or 24 hours. So does extending that treatment window to six hours, does it make a real difference, do you think? Well, hopefully it will. Um, depending upon where we are now, 30, 40 percent of patients come in at three, at under three hours, uh, but people who get to us at three hours, they can't be treated with intravenous TPA right now because the drug has to be started within three hours. That means that people actually have to get to hospitals within two hours of when the symptoms began. So anything that extends that window um, will allow us, if it works, uh, to treat a larger population of patients, and that's obviously what we want to do. But in this, um, in the paper that they, uh, where they reported the findings, paper published in Lancet, um, the authors of this study said that at some centers, they, some centers, not perhaps your center, going ahead and actually investigating, trying to identify people um, outside the three-hour window, so that this is actually being done in, to some limited extent already. Um, is that ever done at your center? Well, we have protocols for patients who can't be treated with intravenous TPA according to the AHA ASA guidelines. So yes, that we're, we're certainly doing that now and we have uh, teams in place to evaluate patients after the three hour window is over. But the thing to keep in mind is that we don't have any treatments that at this point have been proven to help that group of patients. So no evidence yet that you can hang your hat on. That's exactly right. And that's why these types of trials are so helpful, because what they do is they allow us to go forward and more intelligently design the future study that hopefully will tell us whether these interventions are helpful or not. Thank you, Dr. Goldstein. I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.